Welcome to the High Quality Fun Podcast, where tough times make good stories. In today's episode, we talk about how Taylor quit her job, purchased an RV, and toured the United States for four months with her now ex-boyfriend. Taylor tells us about how they acquired the RV, the renovations they did to it, and the shitty lessons they quickly learned while living on the road. The trip allowed her to leave her hometown in Georgia and see more of the United States. Through the journey, she found herself boondocking in the desert, laying under the most incredible stars she's ever seen, and descending off of a cliff face, all with complete strangers. As someone who loves life on the road, this was very fun for me, and I loved hearing about the people she met along the way and the experiences they provided. This episode illustrates the generosity of strangers and the connections that are made when sharing a hobby such as camping and living out of an RV. Stay tuned for this spontaneous and unique episode of the High Quality Fun Podcast. actually started we had gone and visited one of our friends um in washington spokane and spokane washington and we went to montana and we kind of we went to the glacier national park there and we kind of were just like oh my gosh like there's so many amazing places in the states that we have not visited and it would just be so cool to travel around and be able to do that and we had never been out west so it kind of been a topic of conversation for a couple years and um at that point i had been teaching for six years and i was kind of getting burnt out and um i also had also always had a second job so just working a lot and um he worked a lot too and we were kind of just at a point where we had you know i think we were both burnt out savannah we live in savannah georgia um which is an amazing town but it is small in those social social circle aspects sometimes and i think we were just ready for a break from our jobs and just like the Savannah living. And we had, like I said, I had been working two jobs for probably like four years at that time. So we had saved up a lot of money and um, we were kind of just like, you know, like we're young, like let's just do it. And we ended up meeting how we got the RV. We met this guy who um, he was selling it. It barely had any miles on it. Um, and he was just using it to because he did race cars and stuff like that and he was just using it to essentially pull his race cars and so we met him he was like really unique gave us a great deal on it um like i said it ran it ran great and everything definitely a little bit older but we were just like let's just you know um and then actually around that time was when covid happened which was really weird. This is also, you know, we kind of had a lot of time to do nothing. So during that time, we just completely renovated the RV and modernized it and kind of made it our own. And we had that time. So it really worked out. And then, um, yeah, like I said, a lot of things were closed down. So it kind of was like perfect timing because we're like, well, what is open like outside parks, you know, national parks and stuff like that. We're like, let's just do it. No better time. And I ended up, like I said, a lot of um, things were closed down. I ended up getting my ABA certification, which is um, working with autistic kids. And because um, a lot of them were doing teletherapy at the time. So I got this gig where I was just working with two kids twice a week. Um, and I got a, um, what is it? A service thing. Hot like, spot. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot spot. So I was like, well, it doesn't matter where we are. I can like use it wherever. And it worked out just because we had saved a lot of money. But, it, you know, it's also nice just knowing that you have a little bit of income coming in. It wasn't a lot, but it was at least enough for like gas and stuff, which is extremely expensive in an old RV. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, that worked out. And so we kind of just, you know, decided to do it. And, you know, honestly, one of the best decisions I've ever made because went on a lot of crazy adventures and it was really fun. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I've never been to Gr- Glacier National Park, and I've heard just glorious things about that place. So oh my gosh. I could see how that would like spur you to dive into all this. Yeah, <laughs> it's so unreal because we always talk about, or we had always talked about, and I still want to like, you know, talk about going out of the country and stuff, which I have done, and that is incredibly beautiful as well. But just really seeing, like, you know, some of we have these. Some, there's so many amazing places in our own backyard. Like we're like, obviously we need to do this and a cheap way to do it or a cheaper way to do it is to travel through an RV. So. 
Yeah, and I, I like because I have family down in Georgia. I remember coming down there so often and just being almost being bored with the the surroundings because it was always just like suburbans, like suburban areas. Uh, and then I actually had the opportunity to go and travel through, do like whitewater rafting in Northern Georgia. And oh, nice. that was cool. I was just like, holy crap. Okay, Georgia is way better than I ever thought it was, but I just haven't seen half of it. And yeah, you know, same thing with Michigan. There's people that, that when I was working for Ford, they came from out of state, got this job at Ford. Everyone knows Ford, and they never left the the like lower half of the state and just bitched about how terrible Michigan is. So you you have all these gorgeous places in your own state, and then if you get the hell out of the state and go see some stuff, there's just beauty everywhere. Yeah, it um, really is. So did you did you quit? Uh, you quit before COVID and then it just happened that COVID happened. Yeah. It was crazy. Cause I, yeah. So I quit like at the, yeah. End of the year, right before COVID. Cause, and that was always the plan. I obviously didn't know COVID was about to happen, but honestly it worked out. That was the best time I feel like I could have quit teaching because all my friends who were teachers said it was like the worst year of their life teaching during COVID. Cause you know, no one really knew what to do and yeah, crazy time. So I was pretty, Thank, obviously not thankful for COVID or anything, but thankful that I quit at that time um, just because it was, I know it was a really tough year for everyone, but yeah, I heard, you know, teachers already have it tough every day, no matter the conditions. So um, yeah, it really kind of worked out that that happened and we were just like, okay, we're, like, let's go. Um, and honestly, like, I really do feel very fortunate that we did it at that time because I know so many people were locked down and there weren't things that many people could do. And that kind of gave us an opportunity to still travel and live our lives while still being like obeying those COVID rules, like not being around people and everything. Like we were just like literally out in the wilderness half the time, just by ourselves. And a lot of the national parks that we went to, you know, certain areas were closed down, but they were all still open just because, you know, they had certain restrictions, but we were still able to do that. And it also, it also wasn't as packed when we were going to those national parks and big places because not as many people were traveling. So it was kind of like incredible timing, honestly, because we got to essentially be at some parks like by ourselves, which was really neat and like such a cool experience. We had a similar experience of like traveling around that time. We were supposed to go to Europe and we had our plane tickets and everything and then COVID happened and it was just like, okay, well, I took all this time off from work. Yeah. What are we going to do now? And so we, we drove around the U S and, and just saw so much stuff and it didn't feel like there was like a massive pandemic going on because we just, you know, lived it up. And as you said, some places were empty. Uh, Zion was really weird because they, oh, we went there they, too. It, yeah. Oh, did you? Okay. Uh-huh. I don't know your experience, but you can only get into certain parts of the park on a bus. Yeah. And they were being so weird with how many people could be on the bus that they couldn't shuttle enough people in and out. And then also, uh, I, I think at that point in time, everyone was traveling because of COVID. They're like, well, we can't leave our houses. Now we're suddenly nature fanatics. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, we did not get, we did not try to buy the bus pass in time to shuttle in and so mm -hmm. we ended up like we ended up hiking like five miles in to get to the the narrows which is where you're hiking through the water yeah. and uh like five miles out just trying to hitchhike our oh way there and gosh. back um it, it was it was hilarious uh but it, it was like a long ass walk we got we got back to the truck when it was the sun had already set and it was just like oh holy shit get us back to our campsite um oh my gosh yeah, yeah. Did, that was did, yeah sorry. go ahead sorry, sorry. <laughs> i was just saying that was a similar situation but yeah you guys did we definitely went to different parts of zion we didn't get to do the nares because that was like when we went it was like closed down at the time i don't know if it closes okay. down at certain parts of the year or if it was due to covid but um so yeah we unfortunately didn't get to do that part but we did see some really cool other parts because we kind of had a tour guide when we were in parts of Moab, which I can tell you about that later on too. But yeah, we had like our own personal tour guide from a really funny story. So I'll tell you about that, but. <laughs> Foreshadowing. 
So, yeah. so tell me, tell me about the RV before we we dive into the trip, and then I want to know what renovations you did. Yeah, um, yeah, and I'm happy. I don't know if you show pictures or anything, but I'm happy to just send you pictures too. But um, yeah, it was a 2010 Coachman. Um, I want to say 2010. I could be wrong on the date, but it had like less than 10,000 miles on it. Um, and it was funny. Cause like I said, the guy that we bought it from, he, um, he bought it from like the, the, uh, mayor of like Hardy town or something. So we ended up calling our RV, Mr. Mayor because of that. It was just kind of a funny backstory and everything, but, um, it was like completely like great and renovated, but it essentially looked like if you walk into like your grandma's house, like <laughs> this, like that really old school carpet kind of like no offense to grandmas. I love my grandma. Um, <laughs> kind of like that, like, yeah, old carpeting. The worst thing was there was carpet all around the toilet. And I was like, who does this? Like, um, and then just like really kind of like flattery, flowery patterns on the wall and just like a, a flowery couch, like pull out couch bed um, or sofa. Uh so yeah, like everything was like functional and worked, but you know, we were just like, you know, if we're going to be living in this thing, it'd be nice for it to like be more like our style. So right. like I said, around COVID, um, it was like towards the end of the year that we bought it. And actually, so the end of the year I was teaching, I guess when COVID kind of started coming, um, but like everyone was home. So I, I was like just at the end. And then the next year was like the full year when kids were out of school for COVID. So it was like right at the end of, I guess, 2019. So I was teaching, but everyone was teaching from home. And at that time I was a specials teacher. So they weren't really doing specials. So I really wasn't doing anything <laughs> like, um, cause they were just kind of trying to have the students focus on their main homeroom, like teachers, you mm -hmm. know, just trying to figure it out at the end. So I essentially just had all this free time. And then my boyfriend was a bartender. So that was shut down too. Um, so we just had like a lot of time. So we pretty much, we tore everything out. We tore that couch out. Um, we tore out all the carpet, which I I know you guys just built a new house, but man, like tearing out carpet is like probably one of the worst things I've ever done, especially around that toilet. Like it was just gross, like gross stains, gross. Yeah. So like tore all that out. We bought that, um, that kind of like easy, I'm not good at this. Describing Linoleum. This yeah. Like wood. I, I don't even know. It wasn't like real wood, but that those fake wood, like planks that you laid down and you had to like match up. It took way longer. Ooh, it took a long time to do, but yeah, we did that. We repainted the wall. We like, repainted all the walls. We um, changed the sofa couch, um, which was great because it was a pullout couch. So we we wanted to keep it. We just like um, redid the furniture on it. And then, um, yeah, painted all the walls. Um, kind of just put our own personal touch on it. Oh, one thing that we did that was really cool um, where the kitchen area was, we did um, like a bunch of pennies and we did the, uh, I don't know what it's called. Penny like, bar. Yeah. We did a penny bar with like black. So yeah, we really made it look really cool. I can send you pictures and stuff of it, but um, yeah, we just put our own style on it and hung up some pictures and cool things in there, which if you are an RV, I don't suggest that you have too much because um, <laughs> you're driving a house on wheels. So everything's just like, <laughs> like when you're driving at least ours too, because it was older. <laughs> I'm sure newer ones are a lot smoother, but ours uh, was not. <laughs> I think they're designed to have a bunch of flex in it, so I don't know if I'd yeah. hang up stuff. Yeah, yeah, don't suggest. <laughs> and then I guess my last question was, was this like, how large of an RV was this? Did you have a back room with, uh, with a bed? I assume it had a working shower and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so we bought a 30 foot, it was 30 feet. Um, so yeah, we did have a back bedroom and there was kind of just those doors, like you yeah. open and close like that. And we had a shower, um, which yeah, we repainted all of that and everything, but yeah, just like a, it was very tiny shower, very tiny bathroom. So we had all the necess necessities that you have in a home, just like way smaller version. And then I yeah. guess we did have essentially like 
a living room, but there was a big table in there, a kitchen table. We actually ended up taking that out to create more space. And so like we could have more space to walk in and hang out there. And then we just brought like a fold up kind of table that was higher and, we, um, and just put two like bar stools there so that when, um, you know, any, especially if like more people than just us were in there, like people could actually like walk in and everything. So it was actually pretty spacious considering, um, but yeah, that's how we ended up. And then there was a couch because we did have a friend that stayed with us for like a few weeks on the trip as well. And he slept on the couch. So there was three of us. Oh, and a dog. We had a dog with us the whole time too. So um, <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely squeezed everyone who could possibly be in there. Um, which was like right now. Love it. Yeah. I know that there's some real small ones where you're like fold out couches, your bed. And, and so I was just trying to get a lay of it. Okay. So you, you got this thing, you finally start, you, you quit your jobs and uh, let's just go into it. Like where, where did you start and kind of just navigate us through these four months that you took on the road? Yeah, absolutely. So we made like a pretty like rough, draft of the places we wanted to go like we really wanted to go out west that was our main goal because we had never been to colorado utah or arizona so our main goal was to go out west but we kind of wanted to route it in the most practical way where there if there was any cool states or cities to stop along the way we could do so so but we also didn't have a timeline of like oh, we need to be in this place at this time this place at this time like we didn't do that because we were like okay if we so yeah, we didn't, I mean, I'm sure some people would do it differently and there's definitely certain places, especially like if you are staying at RV parks and a lot of them you do, some you do need to book reservations ahead of time, but it kind of, I mean, I don't know, it really just kind of worked out for us where, you know, even if we did things last minute, we always ended up having a place to stay. And if we didn't, we would just park somewhere random. Park. We definitely had some, like a Walmart night where we slept in a Walmart parking lot, um, you know, slept at a truck station before and stuff too, which was actually not as sketchy as it seems. I was always like so nervous about staying at a truck station just because of those horror movies that you see. <laughs> but yeah. um, it's nothing like that. It's actually very chill and low key. Like the whole time I was like, oh, we're going to get murdered. But like, it's, you know, like, it's totally fine. It actually felt super safe. So truck drivers could care less about you. They don't care. Um, <laughs> they're just trying to sleep too. But um, yeah, so we kind of mapped it out. We were going, we went to Tallahassee, Florida first because um, my boyfriend at the time, his mom was there visiting her boyfriend and was there for a while. So we went there and then we drove up to like uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains in Georgia where my parents had rented a cabin and we parked our RV outside of the cabin that they stayed and and kind of stayed there for a little bit and then we went to um from there we went to the smoky mountains of tennessee um and stayed at um a really cool park there uh cades cove smoky mountains so highly suggest that it's really cool um and then we went through kentucky and did the bourbon trail and then drove through kansas which was ex extremely boring drive but um and then up to Colorado where we had a, Colorado we probably stayed in the longest just because we had a lot of friends there too and um so we stayed they kind of let our as park our RVs in their in their driveways and we got to stay there for free obviously um so we did that quite a bit and then um went to Air, uh Utah and then Arizona and then back down to Austin Texas where we had friends and um then back to georgia uh so we could be uh back in georgia with our family for the holidays so that was the thing but yeah we d we definitely um had a lot of good memories along the ways and a lot of struggles um <laughs> which like i was telling you like they are funny now but at the time whew, you learn a lot about um an rv when you <laughs> like when you're driving it like it is weird having a home on wheels because a, a lot can go wrong. <laughs> yeah, a lot can go wrong in a yeah. normal house. And then yeah, if you're exactly. often using it to drive everywhere and you yeah. don't have like your local community, that's, that's yeah, tough. It's, 
Exactly. So we had a lot of good memories, but I can definitely share um, one of our, one thing that we learned really quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah. What was the start like? Cause you, you, you drive out the driveway or you're, you're like, you know, high on dopamine because you're all excited. Yeah. And like, Super I feel excited. like that's, that's when you learn everything. It's yeah. Like, okay, which I will like say, that. yeah, which I will say we did do a couple test runs before that, like okay. very close ones. Like we stayed in Hilton Head, which is like an hour from Savannah. We stayed there for a weekend at an RV park there. Um, and we did one in Jekyll Island too. So just so that we could have like somewhat of a grasp of what we, of what to do, you know, but it's really different having just like a little stay as opposed to like living in somewhere and traveling in it for like months. So our first thing that we learned, um, we went to Florida, went to Tallahassee. That was great. And we were staying, we were parked outside of his dad or his mom's boyfriend's house, which was great because he had all these hookups and um, everything. Because when you're hooked up, it's just nice because you can actually use, if you have the hookups for water, you know, you can actually use the toilet and you the shower. You can run the generator if you need to. Stuff like that, which you can run the generator without having the power, but I mean, just it could die. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so Florida was really fun. We did like hiking around there, had a really nice time. But um, what we didn't do, which we never did again, is you know, we had gone to the restroom. I don't want to be too disgusting with this, but we had gone to the bathroom the whole time, like that whole probably like I think we were there for maybe four days. Um, we went to the bathroom in there like the whole time and, um, you know, didn't really realize that at least in an old RV, I don't know how new RVs work, but ours, you know, so we left, we didn't, you don't have to, we didn't dump it or anything like that. We just thought it'd be fine. Like, so we started driving off towards North Georgia, like really Ridge mountains. And there is just like, the most pungent smell i've ever smelled in my life like and it's not like it's not even the bathroom it's like once the chemicals start moving because you're driving like something happens i don't know but it is bad it is very bad and i'm sorry if i'm probably grossing everyone out but we were like what are we gonna do like it almost like burns like i i can't even like it's bad but anyway so we're like what are we gonna do like we don't know where to stop and we came across this one at this RV park, like probably like 30 minutes to an hour outside of when we started driving. And we're like, let's just see if we can like empty, you know, that stuff there, like see if the let us. So we did, we had to pay $10, but then this is like the craziest thing I've ever heard. Cause every RV park that I've been to would never have a drainage system like this. So this guy, we're like in a hick town. I don't know where we are somewhere crazy in Florida. Like, Florida people are crazy. I love them, but they're also crazy. And then like, we just come across this like country guys like, yeah, ten dollars apart. Like y'all can empty out your stuff. But the where you're emptying it out, it's on a hill. So you have to park your RV on a hill and empty this out. And it's like literally really hot outside. And so flies are just swarming everywhere. Like that was our first test. My boyfriend at the time was screaming, like screaming. <laughs> so mad we're trying to empty the shit out of this like flies are everywhere on a hill and he's just like who puts this on a hill like and i'm telling you now i've been to a lot of rv parks no one ever puts a sewage system like that on a hill like i don't know why that was on a hill but it was like it was just a real struggle <laughs> and so um we learned really fast before we ever drive anywhere like we always have to empty that out um because that was a really terrible thing it's really funny now but <laughs> so yeah oh that was uh first lesson learned <laughs> we have a pop-up i've never actually had like a sewage tank or anything so that'll be something i have to learn whenever we upgrade to an rv or a larger trailer oh geez yeah yeah, definitely learn about it. That's I definitely suggest that. We did not learn about that well enough, I guess. <laughs> you learned the you learned the proper way. You learned as quick as you could we by did. having we to. learned very quickly. That's true. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, yeah. feel free to feel free to just go into some of the other stories that that happened along this. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so then, yeah, we went to North Georgia, which was yeah. 
all peaceful and calm there. Um, just did a lot of hiking and trails there on the Blue Ridge Mountain, which is gorgeous and really fun. Um, and then from there, yeah, we headed to the Smoky Mountains, which I said we had actually, it was really interesting. So when you, um, cause at the time I had started like on an Instagram page, like an RV page, just about, I was like remodeling our RV, some trips that we, those little trips we had taken previously. And there's a huge like RV community and it's really cool. And there's a lot of people on Instagram that tell their stories and everything. So we actually ended up meeting these, this couple that they actually had like a really, one of those really cool, like Mercedes vans or whatever. And so actually before our trip, they were coming through Savannah and we ended up hanging out with them. We went to the park with them. They actually parked outside of our house um, or my house at the time when we were in Savannah and they were great because they had been traveling in that thing and living in it for two years. So they gave us a lot of great advice, a lot of pointers. Like when we were going somewhere, they were like, tell us where you're going. We'll try to give you good like campsites or great places to go to. So that's awesome. Like people in the RV community are so cool. Like um, have met, yeah, like at RV parks, people just like want to hang out and talk. We one morning when we were um, in Kentucky, there was a, um, an RV park next to us and they were like, y'all come over for breakfast. Like, and we had like a whole breakfast with them. Like that was probably like, aside from just seeing some of the most incredible things I've ever seen, like just in nature and everything, the community that is revolves around like RV and just people camping and everything is so cool. Like the people that you meet and that are so, and you hear their stories, it's just like, really really cool and i loved that and i want to honestly eventually yeah buy another rv or something again partly to travel but just to meet people like i don't know it's really neat to you know push your comfort zone and talk to people that you probably wouldn't talk to or see on a normal basis you know and just hear their stories it's pretty incredible so that was really awesome but anyways so when we were went to the tennis when we went to tennessee in the smoky mountains um they, those RV, that RV couple that we met, they told us about um, Cades Cove in the Smoky Mountains. And it's a national park, but um, you stay there. It's really cool because there's actually like no electricity, like you, there's no hookups or anything there, which is actually really nice because we stayed there a few nights and you're just like very much so, it just feels like you're really in it. Like obviously we were sleeping in an RV, so it's not full on tent camping, but Right. And still you feel very connected to nature in that way. And I remember the next day we were like walking around and it was the coolest thing because I've, I've never seen this, but just like all these wild horses just like ran by us. And I don't know, that was just like such a breathtaking thing and really cool to see. And just like, just really feeling like one with the earth. It's just a really, really neat feeling. And I feel like I felt like I felt that a lot on this trip. And I know people long for that. And i felt like really, really lucky to be like connected with nature like that. It's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's pretty unreal. Um, but yeah. Um, so then after that, we went to Kentucky um, and we did, we ended up, oh, sorry, I did say we were, yeah. So we went to the Smoky Mountains and we went to Kentucky and we did the bourbon trail. Um, so we got to drink a lot of really good bourbon, um, <laughs> meet a lot of cool people and at that time we went there, we traveled a lot um, during the fall time. So just like the leaves changing, it's beautiful. And Kentucky is honestly never a place that I like really thought to go. I didn't really know about Kentucky that much, but that's a beautiful town. Like, or that whole area, like so pretty. I, have I never love been Kentucky. There. Yeah. I got to live down there for two I don't even know if it was summers. I, I got to move down there when I was at Ford for two launches, and Louisville is just like a a sleeper city. It's yeah. no one ever talks about it. It's probably because they don't really have any big sports teams or anything. But that town is mm -hmm. so much fun, and yes. then you can drive. You can drive like twenty minutes to half an hour and be in the middle of like nowhere country. Mm -hmm. um, did you end up going to like Red Red River Gorge or anything? For no, people. but like I heard about all that, and then like I know there's a lot of like caves and stuff there too, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, because we didn't find about out about that till after, and it would have been backtracking a little bit, right? So unfortunately, we didn't get to, but I, I would like to get out there and do that because that sounds amazing. 
You guys are close enough that you can make a weekend trip. I know. Of I realize. I think it's only like six hours from us. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we, we do. do that all the time. When when I was living down there, Chelsea would come down on a short work day on Friday and then stay. Yeah. For we got oh, to see so much so in cool. Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we'll have to go. You'll have to give us some recommendations of where to go and everything. Um, yeah, so that was amazing. And then we drove to Colorado because, like I said, we had a lot of friends um, that were there because with RV parks, it's really interesting. Like sometimes it could be $10 a night to stay in an RV park and sometimes it could be like $200 just depending on where you are. Okay. I know it's really crazy, like the range of where it is. Um, but yeah, so that kind of like really helped us save money. Um, too, just because like, you know, like I said, we, I did have that job that I was just doing two times a week, um, but he wasn't working at all. And so it was, you know, it is a little bit scary when you're not really making a lot of money and you're using all your money saved to see it dwindling down a little bit. So it was really nice to like, you know, our friends are so incredible in the community that we had around us was just really great. And they wanted, you know, I feel like they kind of wanted to see our adventure and be a part of it. So they were pretty much anyone that we wouldn't visit it. They were like, yeah, like park at our house, like do whatever. Um, so that was really nice. And so we stayed in Col Colorado, like at my friend's house for a little bit, um, parked in front in their um, driveway and then at his friend's house. And um, yeah, that was really fun because we got to explore a lot of Colorado with them, did a ton of great hiking there. Um, we had friends kind of as tour guides. So they were able to show us like, all these really cool city like city areas and got, i remember went to like golden state or something that was really cool in colorado did some really really great hiking and then we ended up going over to glenwood springs where they have those natural like hot springs um it's like near aspen so that was like just mind-blowing like <laughs> so incredible um yeah and then along the way so then after colorado we ended up picking up our um my boyfriend at the time, like one of his best friends, because he actually is from Africa, like South Africa, and he had to go back there. And then he got stuck over there because of COVID. And we at the time had been watching his dog. So his dog was on this trip with us because we had been watching. We essentially <laughs> had his dog for like a year at that time, which is now my ex-boyfriend's like that is his dog because Grant, his friend, ended up having to go back over to Africa and was like, and they had developed this bond, like my ex loved that dog. So it is his now. Um, but yeah, so he ended up meeting us in Utah. So he and got trapped in the States and just decided to like leg on to this trip then? Yeah, like it was weird because he actually got trapped. Like he was over in South Africa. Like he got trapped there for a while, but then somehow was able to come back. And he was like, I'll join y'all since you guys have been like, have since you've had my dog for my like dog. over a year, which is essentially at that point, it was like ours. Um, great. Yeah. Great fun dog. Um, but yeah. So then he was like, I'll meet y'all. So then he ended up meeting us was actually only supposed to stay with us for a week. Ended up staying with us for three weeks, which ugh, at times it was challenging. Having three people in an RV is very challenging sometimes, but you know, uh, but it was really fun because he actually knew a lot of people or he knew some people in Moab, which is where we went to in Utah. And um, which this is like how we ended up meeting one of our own personal tour guides. Like, thank you, Grant, because he was and he still is actually, uh, but single. So when we were in Moab, he was on Tinder and stuff. And <laughs> he ended up. Uh, meeting this girl on tinder who was a park ranger at um dead horse trail park which is really incredible if you ever go to mob again that is a really really cool park and so she was just like they were talking and stuff and she was like yeah if you guys want to come i'll get you into this park for free and like give you i'll take you on the trails and everything and at the time i was like yes like give me a girl because i was just like with these two guys for a long time, I was like, I need, I'm a girl's girl. So I was like, I need some girls in my life. <laughs> like, help me. <laughs> so actually, she ended up being like the coolest person ever. 
took us, like we got into these parks for free. She also ended up some, I don't know, she had all these connections. So then she got us two nights where we could park our RV at um, the pink sand dunes in Moab, which is like, at, oh my God, it's stunning. Like the sand is actually pink and you can like go down them on sleds and like just seeing the sunset there. So we got to just like literally stay at the pink sand dunes. Like she had all these hookup and connections and she actually ended up staying with us for a couple of days and just showing us a lot of really cool things around Moab. Um, so, and actually her and I are still very good. We kept in touch. That's and awesome. she, yeah, I was like, she doesn't talk to Grant anymore, but I'm like, we're friends. Like, thanks. Um, <laughs> So she actually, she ended up being a park ranger in Bluffton for a while, which is like less than an hour from Savannah. So when she was, when she was in Bluffton, we would like meet up every so often and stuff. And then actually recently when Steven and I went to New York for his work trip, she lives in Connecticut. So we ended up, her and I had like a whole day in New York. She took the train over and so we had a great day. So yeah, we have kept in touch, like really, really cool, sweet girl. Um, and yeah, that, it's just so funny. That's what I'm saying. Like this trip, I'm so grateful for as a whole because of all the like beauty and nature that we saw, but just like the people that we met and connected with. And I've made like literally a lifetime friend from, it's just like really neat. Um, I, I think that's, that's a thing with, uh, with a lot of hobbies and I don't know, especially nature hobbies, but you, you go and you do something that you love and you're already just, you know, so super excited to be doing that and mm -hmm. everyone and you're with people that are doing the same thing so everyone is so excited to just talk and tell stories and get together um i mean going snowboarding you have that uh definitely going camping people people love to help everyone out mm -hmm. um and I'm, I'm sure you had a lot of moments where you're like oh crap well this is our first time doing this and they look like they've been doing this for three years i bet they have this one specific tool or this one tip that we need or bug yeah. spray, right? Yes. Um, it, it's great. I, I've always found that in camping and hobbies, you just meet the coolest people. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. You really do. Um, yeah, so that was amazing. And then also Grant had a friend who lived in Moab too. And what was really cool is, so that's, the cool thing out west that like I had never seen or knew about is that there's so much just free land out there. So pretty much it's like, and no one owns it. So it's like, you can essentially camp and like park an RV wherever you want to, um, which is so cool. Cause that is not the case in Georgia. Like you can't just go park on someone, <laughs> not someone's land, like, and something will happen. So um, that was really cool. So he had a friend and his friend's girlfriend they actually had, I think, like a couple of years previous to us getting our RV, they had bought um, an old ambulance truck, like, or whatever, and they completely renovated it, and it was so cool. But they essentially were just living out in the desert of Utah, like, and they had jobs and stuff. They would drive to their jobs every day, but that's where they lived in this um, that's cool. old emergency. Yeah, like, it was cool. So they were like, yeah, come out there and, like, live in the desert with us for a few days or however long you want to. So we're like, okay, great. So as we're driving there, it's like a little bit sketchy. Cause like we're in the town of Motop, Moab, which is already small, but then all of a sudden we're not. And we're just like driving in our big old RV. That's like wonking around, you know? Um, and like, I'm like, where are we going? <laughs> like this is crazy. Um, but it ended up being like, and yeah, then we're just like out in the middle of the desert. Like it's just us and them. And it was just so surreal. Um, and they were just like really cool, interesting people. They ended up like, they were both like fire dancers. So that night they put on a whole like fire dance show for us. Like we're eating fire, just twirling fire. Like they were like trying to teach us, like we got to try, um, was not very good at that. But <laughs> But it like, yeah, it was just so fun. And then the next day, um, the guy, I feel bad because I cannot remember his name. So I'm just going to call him Mark. But um, he was like, yeah, we'll go to like this lunch spot tomorrow. Like I have a break from work or whatever. Um, and at the time, I'll say I did not know what he did for work. 
either. So I was like, cool, like whatever. Didn't think about it. So we show up to lunch, like my boyfriend and I at the time and Grant and Grant knew this the whole time and just doesn't tell us. Um, so we show up to lunch, have lunch. Like, so I'm just like in normal clothes. I'm in jeans. I'm in like actual jeans and like a crop top and just like out for lunch. And then he, and then his friend Mark is like, Oh, I have somewhere like, I want to like drive you guys out to this cool spot. Like you have to see this overhang. Like it's really cool. So we're like, yeah, okay, cool. So we go. And then he essentially we're like hiking. I have like converse on jeans. So I'm not, I'm like, we're hiking right now. Like, I don't know what we're doing. He's like, no, it's just like, it's not that bad. Like we're just going to climb a couple of these rocks, like see this amazing overhang. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we see this overhang and it is like, it's huge and it's incredible and it's amazing. He's like, well, since we're here, we might as like, well, climb up it. And so I'm just like, okay, like everyone's on board. So I'm just like, sure, like, let's do it. So we climb this overhang and once we get up there and he has, he has this backpack on him, which I don't know. I didn't think at the time, but apparently he's at like, his job is like, he is, um, mountain he like repels people he repels off overhangs and mountains and stuff so he starts taking out all these ropes and there's already like set up like hooks up there because like people repel off that all the time and he's like yeah we're about to he was like guess what guys like we're gonna repel and grant is just like laughing and i'm like what (laughs) i'm just like i've never done that in my life and this is like it's terrifying. I'm just like, oh my God. And he's just like, I'm like a professional. This is what I do for work. Like, I just like, you know, Grant said, you're in town. I want you guys to like experience this. It's really fun. So like, uh, honestly, like, well, since I knew he was a professional, I was like, okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. But I was still like about to like shit my pants. I was like, oh my God. You just wanted a burger and now you're yeah, I was like, kind of from a cliff. I know. I was like, I'm in jeans. Like, what do I do? He's like, it's fine. Like, it's fine. So my boyfriend at the time and I, he was just like, do you want to do this? He was like, I mean, like, I'm down. Like, we might as well. We're on adventure. Like, this. I was just like, okay, I'll do it. But like, you go first. <laughs> I'm like, you first. It's like, um, so actually Grant went first. So, cause Grant also is like the biggest daredevil in the world. He, does like the most dangerous things uh his job used to be he used to be an underwater welder um okay. yeah and then he does he's done like so much skydiving he's done those squirrels the squirrel jump suits um into the grand canyon like he is crazy like when we were doing hikes like when we were in at arches he was like going off trail like hike just walking on i was like terrified he was gonna like fall the whole time and he's like he just lives for that he's just like a daredevil and that's just what he does so he was like yeah i'll go first like whatever so he goes of course makes it look so easy like simple and then my ex goes and then so it's just me and i'm just like up there like oh my god i'm just like so scared (laughs) but um i was like you know i'm gonna do it like they survived it's fine you know like if I'm going to die, I guess this would be a cool way to do it. Um, <laughs> so I did it. I, I probably screamed like half the way, the, like probably half the way down. But um, it was actually one of the coolest things I've ever done. And I'm so happy that I did it. Um, I have videos and stuff of that, too, I can show you. But um, yeah, it was a very wild experience. And um, I would I would do it again, honestly. Um, maybe in like more proper clothing attire, but, (laughs) but it was, uh, yeah, that was pretty wild. Was not expecting that to happen at all that day. Um, so you probably would have had to pay like hundred to two hundred dollars to do that. And you just got to do it with a personal person. I know that was another thing. I was just like, I mean, we're doing this for free. He is a professional, like can't get better than that. So it might as well just do it, you know? Um, that's awesome. Yeah. So that was, uh, probably one of the coolest experiences I had on that trip for sure. Um, yeah, very scary. I was, but I was living in the desert. I, and was that, was that kind of the first time, was this trip the first time you really experienced the desert? Yeah, definitely. I had never really, yeah, been in a desert at all before that. So, um, yeah, it's crazy. It really is crazy. I mean, I know people 
say it all the time, but obviously until you're living it, you don't really think about it. But yeah, it is. It's Utah is also really interesting because it's one of those places that to me, or even just out West in general, like, like, okay, if you're in the shade and in, in the middle of the summer in Georgia, like, and if you're under the shade, you're still hot. Like it's still hot, but Maybe. like in out West, I feel like it can be hot. But then if you're in the shade, like it actually is really cool. And like, nice like the weather's just so different there and dry and just really different so yeah it would be like really hot during the day and then it really does drop at night like it's it is wild how that happens i mean i know everyone knows that about the desert but it's like you really i didn't really think too much about it until i was out there and i was like wow this is crazy how drastic the weather changes because like during the day we're walking around in shorts and t-shirts and then we're like bundled up at night so it's just like really wild how that changes but um yeah we had uh that was surreal because yeah there's literally no lights pitch dark and then we were also really close to this like it wasn't any um significant mountain or anything but mountains you know look a lot easier to climb when you're like down there than they are in like one night i don't know if we were all just like running on adrenaline or what and we're just in the desert being crazy Um, but we're like, let's like hike that. So we just like hike this mountain at like 12, at like midnight. (laughs) We're just like, yeah, hiking this mountain in the desert. And then it was really cool because when we went up there, we saw those like rock figurines of like people who've laid them out, you know, stacked up. Um, yeah, so that was really neat. I've never hiked a mountain that late at night either. (laughs) Um, (laughs) so that was pretty crazy. Um, and yeah, uh, being in the desert is surreal. It's crazy. And I like those people, that couple, they just live out there every day. So I was like, oh my gosh, like that's wild. They probably save so much money on like I know living. And they I assume they have solar panels and everything, so they have everything to power themselves. And yeah, that's that's wild. I, I yeah. talked to uh in the podcast like three before this, I talked to a guy who same deal. Bought a van, gutted it, built it out, and he's been living in that thing for two years now. Wow. And he he works at my company, and you would oh, never really? know it unless you talk to him. So yeah, um, yeah. He he yeah. just went uh, kayaking in Death Valley because they got water for like you know in the in the bison basin. Yeah, I I'm saying that right. Uh, and apparently that hasn't happened in a long time. I could be butchering mm-hmm. that. But just just very cool, the people that are doing this and who are part of this community. Let's take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. Here on the High Quality Fun Podcast, we love showcasing people's stories through our interviews and posts. This gives our guests the opportunity to share their favorite memories, but sometimes audio alone is not enough. Most people are sitting on a collection of hundreds of photos and videos capturing their favorite moments without the time or experience needed to compile these memories into a video. This is why I have chosen to partner with Spivo. Simply send them your unsorted photos and videos, and in seven days or less, they will create a professional video edit that allows you to relive your favorite memories again and again. To ensure every customer is satisfied with their video edit, Spivo provides unlimited revisions for 30 days and offers a 100% money back satisfaction guarantee. As someone who has limited time to edit his family adventures, let alone this podcast, I am excited to work with Spivo to help everyone eternalize their favorite moments. Visit spivo.com slash discount slash high quality fun to learn more and let us know what you think about the product. We'd love to share it. Now, back to the show. That couple in the desert, they're by no, I wouldn't say they're like slumming it or anything, but they're definitely using as little resources as possible. Yeah. So it's it's interesting because you meet people like that. And then like, and then there's a whole other side of like RV people who like only go to RV parks, like have that thing like decked out to the T's using like all the power and electricity in the world to run that thing. Um, so it's just really interesting, like seeing both perspectives of camping through RVs and like stuff like that. Um, and many people like everyone does it, whether you have very little money or you have like all the money, people end up making it work out. And it's, um, it's pretty cool to see. Um, but yeah, so then after that, yeah, we ended up going to Arizona. We went to um, Flagstaff, which was like Sedona and Flagstaff, which was incredible. Sedona, um, 
one of the best stargazing experiences I've ever had in my life, which was also um, kind of a crazy story. I'm like, I don't, was I just crazy sometimes on this trip and just like trusting of everyone? I don't know. I mean, like, I'm happy that I was, but also I'm like, Taylor, you put yourself in some weird situations at times. But um, I, I mean, I think that's a part of it too. <laughs> you, you, you get these people that have, you know, such deep rooted hobbies with you and you, you can almost blindly trust them. You probably shouldn't, but yeah, uh, I feel like when you're in, in those settings, like political views normally align or they don't mm -hmm. matter. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think you're crazy for, for <laughs> trusting these people blindly because we've done it too. And yeah. it just seems so bizarre when you come back to the real world and you can't yeah. trust anyone. Yes, I know. It's so weird. Um, so yeah, so we ended up staying at this really cute little RV site um, right by like this just this little river in Sedona and right up the street was like just this little bar that you could walk to. And so it was me, Grant and my um, boyfriend at the time. And we were like, oh, like we had just settled and we're like, let's go up to that little bar. Let's just like see what's happening. So we walk up there and there's literally three people in there. There's this girl who is by herself and then there's this other couple who apparently was staying at the rv park too who was just like smashed and we're like this is interesting like and they were just like talking nonsense they eventually ended up leaving but we ended up talking to this other girl and i wish i was better at names and stuff but anyways we ended up meeting this girl who is probably like around our age she had apparently been on like one of the survivors before we ended up talking to her she's really cool but also like some of the stuff she was saying was like a little bit concerning and kind of like crazy. I think she was a little drunk as well, which, you know, all good. But anyway, she was just like, I live here. Like I know where like the best stargazing is ever. So you guys, you like, you have to come with me tonight. Like you have to come. And we're just like, okay, like we don't know <laughs> this girl at all, but like, again, okay, let's just do it. So actually I felt, so she was just like, but I guess like my boyfriend at the time had somewhat of a sense because he was just like, well, we're not because she was like, just drive with me, all of you guys. And he was like, we're not all he was like, no, we'll like take my car, too. But then we put Grant in the car with her. We're like, bye, Grant. You can drive with her. And we'll follow you. And he's just like, cool. <laughs> so we end up like following her. We're driving for like quite some time. And we end up going to her house because we were first originally just going to go straight to this spot where she was going to show us stargazing but then she was like no like we have to go to my house i need to get blankets like we have to get wine i'm gonna have you guys taste this cheese she just kept talking about all about this cheese she was like you have to eat i we're gonna get this cheese at my house like once you try it it's the most incredible cheese and i was like i mean i do like cheese but <laughs> so okay um so yeah we go to her house and we're just like and then Grant's like in her house with her, helping her like collect all these blankets. And like my boyfriend and I at the time, we were kind of just in our car. We're like, what if Grant's like getting murdered in there? <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> we're just like, we're like, I don't know what to do, but finally. At least he had some good cheese while he died. Yeah, exactly. So finally he like comes out and she's like, okay, like follow me. So again, kind of tell you where we are in Sedona. It's like completely like pitch dark. Um, She took us to some spot that was probably like 30 minutes from where her house was and just lays down all these blankets and she's like just like look up and honestly like incredible i've never seen that many stars in my life um yeah like it was so surreal i feel like none of us could even talk like just seeing that and i mean like i've seen amazing stars and stuff but i Again, I just don't know how to describe it. It was just so breathtaking and just really feeling like one with nature and just literally seeing all the stars. We just, I think we all just sat there. I mean, we definitely ate some cheese too, but we sat there and just like looked at the sky. I feel like in silence for like an hour, just like all laying there, just like staring at the stars. And um, it was crazy. And then she was definitely an interesting one and just was telling all these stories of when she was on Survivor and um just a really interesting character i honestly don't know how we ended up getting away from her eventually at some time because i feel like she wanted us to like stay at her house and all this stuff and at some point we were just like we gotta go but <laughs> like but thank you because that was amazing but um yeah it was really like that was such a 
cool moment. I'm still to this day, like have never seen stars like that in my life. Um, so yeah, it's funny. Like sometimes it pays to trust people, I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. Pretty it was sure. probably just like craft singles cheese, but you were so blown yeah. away by the stars <laughs> that it tasted amazing. Exactly. <laughs> just the right amount of wine drunk. Yes, exactly. Um, and then another thing that I forgot, this was actually in Colorado, but I was just thinking about like another struggle that we had where the RV community kind of really helped was um, we did when we were actually in Glidwood Springs, we had one of our pipes burst because oh, no. we did not run the like drains and it was snowing and stuff. So um, it froze and burst. And that was like a whole catastrophe because we had no idea what to do with that. Um, but it's cool because like, like I said, I had created that Instagram page and I had kind of posted about it and I had like all these people messaging me, like telling us like what to do, how to fix it, where to go, where we were, you know, like, so we ended up getting that fixed. But I just also thought that was cool because it was definitely a struggle at the time and not ideal, but the community around that really like honestly helped us figure that out. That's so that really was really cool. cool. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, then from, yeah, Arizona, we went to Austin, Texas, because uh, we had a friend there. And yeah, just that's kind of, I guess, where the trip ended because we stayed, well, we stayed with him and had a great time. Um, and yeah, I spent my birthday there. Actually, like this isn't, I, well, it's amazing to me because I like am obsessed with dolphins. And so I did get to swim with dolphins for the first time in San Antonio. Um, so I swam with dolphins, that trip, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, then we, cool. yeah, we made it back home after that. Did you have a end it? Did you know when you were going to end this trip or was that just like a natural ending point? The funds were running out. You wanted to get back to the real world. Um, I think like we always like our plan was always to make it back to Georgia in time for the holidays. Um, just cause like, I know, I mean, I know my parents are like, we can't survive with you if you're not with us for the holidays. <laughs> But um, also, and we and we wanted to be in like just see our family and everything. Um, I think so. We didn't really have like I think I well we did you know at some point we kind of discussed it. We we're like you know we want to keep traveling and um, doing it in this RV. But there are some there were more things that I didn't talk about that we did need to like figure out with the RV as well um, before probably traveling more and further. Um, so that definitely played a role. And then we were also like, um, sorry, I'm getting a charger. Um, but we were also mm -hmm. like, it will, you know, it would be nice to like replenish like our money. Um, Cause unfortunately when you're traveling and not making much, you're just spending. And there was a point where we just kind of had to be practical and be like, okay, we got to figure out how to make more money here. We're not going to be able to survive much longer. Um, but we had, yeah, we did have intentions of keeping it. Um, so we obviously spent like the holidays, like Thanksgiving and Christmas with our families and stuff like that. And then headed back to Savannah where, um, at the time I was also working at a brewery and my boyfriend at the time, his job had told him that he could come back and bartend and COVID was definitely in existence, but, um, Savannah was pretty open, honestly. So we could go back to those jobs and, the plan was to like, yeah, get more money, work for a few months, get more money um, and figure that out. But um, awkward. But yeah, we ended up breaking up. So <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of ended that because we had bought the RV together. And so we were like, well, you know, I don't think either of us, you know, it just held like a lot of memories together and then just like I don't think either of us necessarily wanted to buy the other one's half. We were just like, okay, I don't know what to do. So we ended up um, sadly selling it. But um, I do have, I would very much so in the future like to buy another one and do more trips for sure. I love it. I, I'm finding that doing this podcast, some of my favorite stories are these like, you know, unscripted you know, no job, no time frame, whatever. Like we had a yeah. couple that hiked the Appalachian Trail. 
my buddy know. living out of the van, your story. Um, yeah, it's just, it's cool. And I, I love sitting back and listening to, to some of these crazy stories because I don't know. I want to, I have this dream of buying a school bus or a van, gutting it, building it out, and maybe not doing it full time because we have this house, mm -hmm. this home base that we, we want to keep. But it would be so great to once a year or, or every few months just like hop in that thing and go on an extended adventure. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing about, yeah, I mean, we actually almost bought a school bus too at first. Um, oh, really? Yeah, we were very close to doing that. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's really cool because, uh, yeah, like I said, we met a lot of people that kind of do that thing where they don't do it all the time. But yeah, almost like seasonally they'll do it. Or And the nice thing is too, because I know your job is remote, right? Yeah. So it's almost like, yeah, I mean, you would obviously have to work, I guess, while doing it. But um, if there's no timeline, you can always stay as long as you want to somewhere. Um, and there really are so many. It really is overall like affordable. Like I said, some RV parks are more expensive than others. But I think like probably like we didn't do so much research. We kind of like booked as we went and stuff, which also probably like didn't maybe help us save money at times. But um if you did more research into like looking at where to stay and best deals and stuff, um, you could really like really do it pretty afford. Like it's pretty cheap, especially when you're finding those uh, BLM land where you can camp for yeah. free and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we did a lot of that. Um, it's hard when you're. How many days did you stay at most places? Um, like at our V part, we kind of traveled around like. Like when we were in Flagstaff in Sedona, I think we stayed at like four different ones. So we would stay at yeah. like um, each for, I think the longest we stayed at one was like maybe a week, um, which is nice. Cause it is, I mean, it is some hard, you know, cause it's a house and you're essentially like you unpack the house. Like we cooked in there all the time. Like we used yeah. it like a house, like we cooked, we had all of our stuff out. So it is like essentially anytime you do move or travel and you have to pack all your stuff back up. Um, that's why if I did it again, I love like the 30 foot one was nice because it was really spacious, but it was not like, so it was great when it was not moving to travel in and drive that thing was like a beast sometimes. Um, so if I did it again, I would probably buy like, honestly, I've thought more of like a tow behind one, not a driving one. Okay. Just because that, oh, well, that was another issue we had too. Like at one point something happened with the engine with the RV. So like there's been two engines that you have to consider instead of just like your car engine. So that was like a thing that I thought of. I'm like, okay, if I ever did this again, I would probably get a tow behind. So I wouldn't have to deal with that engine aspect of another one. Um, and it is a lot, but it also is nice. Cause like while my boyfriend at the time was driving, I could just like lay in the bed. Like, <laughs> so I don't know. There's pros and cons to both. And like everyone has different stories, as you know. But um, yeah, I would probably, I, I want to do it again for sure. But I would probably like get something maybe a little smaller just yeah, for driving purposes and gas. We would be driving that thing like up a mountain. You're just seeing the gas tank go down and you're like, oh. <laughs> And you're also in those like the boonie areas, so you're just you're so strategic. You're like we might yes. have to gas, pay, gas station for another hundred hundred fifty miles. We really yes. need to go up right now. Yeah. Yes. I, uh, Another thing is, I always I'm in for now. I'm always thankful. Like, I've never realized how much I took advantage of a washer and dryer until I didn't have one. Because <laughs> yeah, we would have to find stuff too to like wash our, you know. We'd have to plan that out in time to wash our clothes every now and then. And I'm like, man, I miss my washer and dryer so much. <laughs> That's yeah, definitely think about that. <laughs> uh, one thing that came to mind when you were talking about doing this uh, again or, or long term, when mm -hmm. we went out to Colorado with our pop up and our family, um, we actually talked to the staff that were running the park. I think they had RV parking there too. Oh, they, they did because they parked an RV there. Um, there's like a whole community around people that just volunteer at these different parks. 
and they say, hey, I'll stay here for two months, three months, and all their utilities are covered. I think they make some money on top of it. And all they have to do is be available for the the park guests to answer questions and show them around. Yes. And so like, I thought that was fascinating. Um, so they have like a small window of hours. And if someone can cover it, they can go, you know, explore or, or whatever they want. And I thought that was just like really interesting. I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, because a couple of places we stayed, they were like, yeah, that person got to live on one of the like little campsites and have all the hookups. Yeah, like you said, for free, they just had to like, I remember ours, the one that we met, he would just had to like monitor. He was kind of like the monitor guy of the yeah camp park. But yeah, like I was like, dang, like it's just living life. Like, because no one's making that big of a ruckus there, honestly. Like, so it's yeah. a very chill job. Yeah. And then he can just essentially do whatever he wants after, yeah, that time where he has to work. So that is so true. That would definitely be something to look into. That's so true. And I, I guess going off that, like, I would have never even known that. You probably didn't even know that was a thing. And the amount of stuff that you mm-hmm. learned on your your four months going out there, just meeting all these strangers and seeing the rest yes. of the world. It's, it's wild. It's every single trip, every single long trip just comes with a lot of new experiences and learning how to do it better yes Um, absolutely we should do it together all of us yeah i'm down let's get down to kentucky and uh do a demo run and then figure out how to do this full time yeah because they also i didn't realize because when we were staying at camps there's ones that like you can rent and you can honestly rent them for a pretty good deal as well like if you don't want to full-on commit to buying one like Steven and I could just like rent one for a week or something too. And they're oh, pretty the nice. Yeah. Cause yeah. we looked, we met this couple too that um, had rented one and they let us look inside of theirs and it was really nice. And they were like, yeah, it's really honestly affordable. So that's when always we Alaska. A lot of the couples that were out there, they just rented RVs. They didn't, they didn't do an Airbnb or hotel or anything. They rented an, a little mini RV traveled in that. Cool. Um, and I know that there's also, it's almost like an Airbnb thing now because people, they buy these to drive for three months out of the year and the rest of the time it just sits there. So they might as well collect some money on it if people are, if they're willing to trust people to drive and travel on it. Um, yeah. There's lots of way to, ways to do it or try it from my understanding before actually diving in head first and buying something. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we definitely dove in, which I, I don't regret though because we, I mean, yeah, we definitely had trials and tribulations, but uh, It was so fun, like, so fun. Thank you for listening to the High Quality Fun Podcast. If you guys enjoyed this show, please give us a follow. And if you have a good story or just want to say hi, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram or YouTube. Thanks for listening.